Hi, my name is Chris and this is my garage. I'm going to take this single sheet of OSB and six two by threes and I'm going to add some over garage door storage shelves. In fact, these storage shelves to my garage by myself. If you wanna see me put them in, stick around. The uh, current time is 11 a.m. I'm gonna see how long this takes me. I'm gonna show you some techniques for safety that'll allow you to hang shelves like this by yourself. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do is go over all of the tools and hardware with you that I'm gonna need for this project. Now let's get into the components. I'm just gonna use um, some three inch um, screws that I have on hand. I'm gonna use some 3 8 inch washers that I have on hand. I got some 5 16 inch fender washers. They're actually, I wanted to use 3 8 but the store I got my hardware at Home Depot was actually out of 3 8 inch fender washers. Imagine that. Some 3 8 inch um, lock nuts. I'm using these 3 8 inch, cut this open. This is the magic device right here that I'm going to be using. So they're hanger bolts. So they're wood thread and then they're machine thread female and they allow me to attach this 3 8 inch threaded rod and come straight out of a rafter above me. So this is going to be the money maker right here for doing this by myself. So let's just go over it again. So we got these 3 8 inch hanger bolts, four eye bolts, four pieces of 3 8 inch all thread, some lock nuts for 3 8 inch, some fender washers for 3 8 inch, some regular flat washers, and some wood screws. So pretty simple, not shown here. Item number one is a ladder. Item number two, I already got them all on safety glasses. I'm gonna use a drill and driver. Set of drill bits, set of driver bits for all my hardware. Pencil, level, and stud finder. And in case you've never used one of these stud finders, I love this thing. It's got LEDs all along it and it'll highlight the, uh, the stud or the rafter that's um, under the LEDs. I, I just like this, it's similar to one of those that actually shows you the image behind the, the screen, but it's uh, a very cost-effective stud finder, and I find myself uh, really enjoying this one. It's a lot more accurate. A four-foot level, got coffee, essential. Okay, folks, so we all know hindsight's 2020, and there's a few tools I forgot to mention that I used. Uh, up front, my miter saw, I use this to cut pieces to length. You can also do this with a handsaw and mark it with a square, or you can use a handsaw and a miter box. Um, also, I used a couple wrenches and a socket set, specifically a 5 8 inch socket. The outer profile of the hanger bolts has a 5 8 inch hexagonal profile. I used it to on my um, socket adapter for my drill to drive those anchor bolts up into the rafters. I used two types of squares a speed square and a framing square. Um, I used two different types of hand saws to cut out a notch, um, a coping saw and a regular hand saw. And I will put links to all types of tools and hardware down below. Another thing before you go, uh, if you found some value in this video, hit the thumbs up button. It helps uh, this video do a little bit better. And uh, if you're not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. I've got lots of great content to help you maximize your garage or workspace. And um, please uh, consider subscribing before you get out of here. Thanks for watching. Okay, so a pretty key note. Um, I had these two panels cut at the home center. Uh, they typically have a panel saw on site and they can even rip a sheet of plywood or in this case OSB straight up the middle. So uh, it's not the most accurate cut. There's a slight skew to it and they're not quite the same width but that doesn't really matter. I also picked out six of the best two by threes that I could find. Okay, so here I'm gonna give you an overview of what I'm gonna be building in the video. So I started out with a rough design. I actually modeled this after the fact to describe to you what I did. So what you'll see in the video, I'll attach these cleats nice and level at the height I determined for it. Then I'm gonna come back and add this piece on, secure it with an eye bolt and this piece of all thread up to the rafter. Then I will attach the sheet that's on top of here and then start to build the frame in underneath of it.
I'll scab on here and I'll actually add this piece of plywood and then start to scab out underneath it and build this frame and then attach these other hangers up into the rafters and then I'll finish off building the frame and level everything by adjusting the nuts that uh, manipulate the washers up and down in these eyelets. This thing is extremely strong um, with my body weight on there just under 200 pounds. There's almost no deflection and I've since loaded this thing down with lots of things. It's doing exactly what we want it to do. It's 24 square feet of overhead storage. That's not in the way of anything else in the garage. It's great for those things that you only get down a few times a year, whether that's camping supplies, Christmas storage, or what have you. But it's a great use of some space that would otherwise go completely unused. So what I'm gonna do first is just mark out all of my stud locations and my rafter locations so that I know what I'm working with. So I am blessed with a tall garage here because my house is built on a crawl space, which uh, puts the garage down a little bit lower, but I have 42 inches of vertical clearance between the top of this um, garage door track and the ceiling. So I have 36 inch all thread. So I'm probably gonna come down here in the, uh, about the 32, 33 inch height area that way i have plenty of extra thread on that all thread to adjust my level for my shelf well they're 33 inch ideal shelf height Okay, now I've got my line scribed for a level the whole way around. The next thing I'm gonna do is screw one of my two by threes to the wall here into each stud. I'm gonna avoid the, the electrical area around here. So when I'm working, hanging something. So when I'm hanging something by myself, I always work from the center outward. That way it just balances everything as I go. So um, as I talk to the camera and stop paying attention to what I'm actually doing, you'll probably see me screw up. I'm going to help her in the garage in case you can't hear him. I'm attaching this cleat to the wall so I can rest the shelf up on it whenever I go to raise it up. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is cut two pieces of two by four. One is gonna come out, so right here is how far the shelf is gonna come out to, 24 inches. Out here is where the nearest rafter is. So I'm actually gonna extend a piece of two by four that's gonna be the side frame out to 30 inches so that I can catch the center of this set of rafters with the all thread hanger. I'm also gonna cut a piece right here to be the under frame so I can get that shelf sitting on top of this the cleat go ahead and cut those two pieces now and miter saw okay so one more thing I'm gonna do before I hang this to the wall so this is the cleat that's gonna go above the garage door and then this is the end support that's gonna ultimately have one of these eye bolts through it and the eye all thread uh, made it up to it so I've already determined that the center of my Rafter is out here at 27 and a half inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that and drill and drill a hole for that and install that eye bolt in there. That way it's good to go. I'll just put one of these washers on here. Forgot about a wrench. I didn't tell you that in the tools, but a wrench or socket set. And I'm using washers on both ends, not necessary on this end, but I'm just doing it to kind of maximize the surface area that this thing's clamping to and minimize the stress on the wood. 
Okay, so this 3 8 inch hanger bolt requires a 5 8 inch um, socket. You can drive these either with a socket, but I'm going to use my socket adapter and my impact driver and run this hanger bolt up into the ceiling. And just to keep it from over penetrating, I'm going to also put this washer on. Next thing I'm going to do is just put this up there without anything. I'm going to tow a screw into that so I can tie it into the other uh, cleat that's on the wall already. You know, I probably, I should put a nut on top too, huh? Whoops. Yeah, I need to put a nut on top. Let's go ahead and fix that now. I've got the first shelf hung. I'm into one of the rafters with a piece of all thread there. I've got part of my cleat for the shelf that's gonna come out this way mounted to the wall. I'm gonna mount my other cleat. And then uh, once I do that, I'll probably do my cutout for my second shelf. And I'm gonna have to come into the rafter here. So I'll, I'll have a piece of all thread here and I'll have a piece on the other end. So I'm gonna have this suspended with three different pieces of all thread rather than the four that I bought. So next I gotta cut the uh, piece of two by three that's gonna come out here 24 inches and the second cleat that's gonna go on the wall there on the miter saw. Now one note, wood glue or construction adhesive to make a shelf like this a lot stronger. Um, I decided against it in case I ever uh, want to take this shelf down. I'm breaking one of the fundamental rules and carrying hardware in my pockets. Oops. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is just measure for my cutout. Rather than getting a jigsaw out, I'm just going to use a handsaw to cut this out of the OSB. Now the screws I'm using are actually cement board screws that I have left over from a shower project. Um, I like them because they've got a nice flat head. They uh, cut their own countersink and they're nice and wide on the head so you get a nice firm clamp pressure um, on the OSB. But these are just leftover screws I had. Any kind of screw would work. Now if I painted this OSB it would keep it from chipping out so much. And it would make this shelf a little bit nicer, but whatever, they're garage shelves. Okay, I just cut the frame for over here and along here off camera. I'm just going to come back in and, and attach these to stiffen things up a little bit. And then we will uh, locate 
where we're going to put our, our threaded anchors and we'll draw our holes, etc. and add the threaded anchors. But next I'm just going to attach this bit of a frame here to reinforce everything. Okay, so I've got the shelf roughly framed and up. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is confirm my rafter locations and then mark plumb lines on uh, the frame so that I can come back and drill for my eye bolts and uh, start getting it attached to the L-thread. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so my last one of these, I put in a little crooked, so it caused the all thread to bow a little bit. So make sure that you put these in plumb as you're running them up. So I'm gonna start this by hand up through the drywall. Switch over to my 5 8 inch socket. Now, I'm drilling out my fender washers. Obviously, if I bought the right size, I wouldn't have that issue, but after seeing how Annoying it was to have to thread this 5 16 inch fender washer up the 3 8 inch all thread. I'm just going to drill them out and make my life a little easier. And yes, my vice isn't attached to anything, but it, it holds a lot better than I do, and it's a lot safer. All right, so the pattern I'm going up here with is nut. <laughs> On top, we'll reinforce it with a flat washer, fender washer. Put that down through. We'll go fender washer, flat washer again, and another nut. And this will allow me to adjust the level and capture all of this together in one big happy threaded sandwich. Just gonna make sure it's seated well up into the upper anchor. There we go, that seems pretty good. Now I can adjust this section for level. Good, and we'll just check it in this direction too. This corner's already pretty solid. Awesome. All right, now for the moment of truth, let's see if we made an effective pull-up bar. <laughs> Rock solid. Check this section. Awesome. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Next, I'm going to uh, reorganize my garage a little bit more and uh, get a few more things up off the ground and out of the way that we don't use very often or that we have stored away for you know, those special occasions like camping or moving or whatever. Hey, hey buddy. You want to be in the video? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you say, thanks for watching?
We'll see you next time. I'll see you next time. Bye. Found it. Oh. Oh. Are we doing a backwards day? Okay, cool. Climb down carefully, buddy. All right, so uh, hopefully this inspires you to look at some alternatives to organize your garage. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I love you, buddy. Hey, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're new here, I'm gonna throw a subscribe button right above me. Feel free to click it if this is something you're interested in. I'll have lots more videos like it. I'm gonna put a couple videos over here to my right that I think you'll enjoy. Feel free to check them out. If you found some value in this video, hit the thumbs up button. It helps this video do a little bit better. So do your comments. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this video or your tips that go along with it. Thanks again for watching all the way to the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.